So this asymmetrical current is also depends upon my x by r ratio. That is a conclusion from this. This is the asymmetrical fault current. Now let's go to the next two things. So the next one is fault current division factor. What is a fault current division factor? In a simple, I am having a, uh, I am having, uh, suppose, uh, a pipe, which is a uh, 50 mm dia pipe. And I am sending the water through this pipe. Okay. When I am sending water through this pipe, nearly 100% of water will not go in through this pipe. If it is not uh, exactly connected, suppose, let's see in this way, I am having this pipe, uh, which is some 50 mm dia pipe or something. And I am uh, using some uh, pipe. This is a water jet. And I am sending the pipe through the, uh, sending this. If I am sending like this, so what will happen? Water will, some of the water will go out, out like this, right? So, oh, suppose like, let's suppose a 90% of water only going through this, 10% is a wastage or it's saying some other direction. Similarly, if I am, if I am having a conductor mesh like this, and this is connected to some earth third, earth third, earth third one. So if I am sending a fault current through this, then the current absorbing by this one is X. And some of the current may enters into the ground, right? So how much current actually entered into the ground from the maximum thing? That is the fault current division factor. How much it is dividing? How much the fault current is dividing? A factor representing the inverse of the ratio of the symmetrical fault current to the portion of the current that flow between the grounding and the surrounding air. Suppose Ig is the symmetrical grid current. So I am having a grid, right? So some of the current will flow through in this grid and some of the current will flow through the into the system. But the maximum current, what is the maximum current? Suppose 25 kilo amps is the fault current occurred in my system. And only from on the grid, I can see only a 20 or suppose 12.5 kilo amps of the current is flowing on the grid. Remaining everything is going to the surrounding air. So then the fault current division factor is 12.5 by 25. It's nearly 50%. So 0 0.5 is made the fault current division factor. So this fault current division factor, again, depends upon the different uh, things like uh, considering the resistivity of the soil, all those things. So I will discuss in the while. So here the three I zero is the zero sequence fault current, which is the maximum fault current when a three phase two ground fault occurs. When a three phase two ground fault occur, all the three phases are coming into the neutral. So three I zero is equal to, in the worst case for 220 KV, we will consider as 40 K. For 33 kV, we will consider as 25 kA and 132 kV as 31.5 kA and 400 kV as 50 kA or 63 kA. It depends upon the project. Ig is, we have to calculate the Ig now. We have to calculate the Ig. So this Ig, what I am telling, if I am constructing a mat below the ground, below the ground, I can say only 50% is the absorbing by the grid the remaining is flowing through the ground. So how can I <coughs> derive this SF? So I have to calculate the SF. This SF is depends upon the different, some, some other factors that we will discuss in front of them. That is the next one, which is important uh, one SF. This is a, a very important uh, term generally asked in the interviews. The next one is grounded. Uh -huh. This already we discussed it, uh, which is what is meant by grounding. The next one is a ground potential rise, GPR, ground potential rise. The ground potential rise is, <clears throat> the maximum electrical potential that is substation grounding grid may attain 
relative to the distant grounding part assumed to be a potential at a remote end. Suppose I construct, I placed a mat here. I placed a mat here. And whenever a fault occur, this fault may occur. Uh, this is the one way and this is the fault, right? So here there is a no ground. This is a gridded one. So though no, this grid is having some resistance. This grid is having some resistance. So suppose I am calculating the grid RG. I calculate the grid resistance RG. The grid in the sense, a mesh team. We are laying some uh, uh, electrical conductors below the ground, right? Like uh, flats or rods, whatever it may be. So I'm talking about that. That I'm calling as a grid here. So this grid is, I, I'm calculating the resistance of the grids RG. And I know the IG, which is the current flowing in the grid. How can I know this IG? This IG I got from the 3I0 into SF. 3A0, I know, which is 25 k for 33 k with 40 k for 220 k. So I got IG. If I am multiplying this IG, I suffix small g into R suffix small g, then it's coming at it, this, uh, the product called a voltage will develop. That voltage is a uh, ground potential rise. And this voltage generally, it's a, it's a concept that how much voltage was rised here in relative to this remote air? Suppose the potential here is zero volts and the potential here is due to this, it could be suppose 2,400 volts. My GPR is 2,400 volts with respect to this zero volts. Generally, the voltage is calculated plus or high potential to low potential, the voltage, right? Similarly, the maximum electrical potential that is substation grounding grade. May attain, attain in the sense with respect to the IG, I suffix small g into RG relative to the distant grounding grid at some other, some point, at some point. So that is the GPR. Generally, this GPR is equal to grid current times of the grid resistance. So this is the one. So how I got this grid current? If I want to calculate this grid current, grid current equal to SF into IF. IF is 3I naught zero. IF is 3i not zero. Okay, fine. <clears throat> Next. <clears throat> 